It's Thursday the 8th of December and welcome to From the South. The powerful Senate Speaker, Renan Calieros, presided over plenary session on Thursday, a day after Brazil's Supreme Court overruled a bid to suspend him from his position, as he faces trial for alleged embezzlement. Leftist Mexican senators smashed the piñata of US President-elect Donald Trump at a pre-Christmas celebration. Prosecutors from Brazil, Colombia and Bolivia say their joint investigation into the tragic plane crash that killed most of the Chapossoense soccer team could expand. Cuban entrepreneurs travel to Washington to urge US lawmakers to end trade barriers with Cuba and continue on a path to normalization. Last Tuesday night, the Honduran Congress approved a monotax for the informal economy, which is a tax on the poorest business which will now have to pay around $10 to $15 a month regardless of how much they sell. The majority of citizens in the country earn less than $200 a month and have to sustain their families. They seem to have the idea that the informal economy doesn't pay taxes, but they already pay a sales tax of 15% and we suffer from a dollarized price of gasoline at $1.4 a gallon. They are saying it's necessary that these small businesses pay taxes, but it's going to be a catastrophe. We have to remember that the informal economy of Honduras is about survival. They can't be put under a tributary system. Jesus Banega sells cigarettes and candies in Tegucigalpa. He has to support his mother and his two children. He doesn't believe the government is thinking in terms of his benefit. The government says the poor are more important, but in fact the rich are more important. This helps us hang on, because everything is too expensive, and only the millionaires have benefits. Living costs are too high. I have to work 14 or 15 hours to survive. This new tax will deepen the country's miserable situation the government refuses to increase taxes for the rich because they say this could frighten off private investment. Gerardo Torres, Telesur, Honduras. Former French budget minister Jérôme Cauzac has been sentenced to three years in prison for tax fraud and money laundering. Cauzac's brief in government was to crack down on tax dodges. His ex-wife Patricia Menard was handed a two-year prison sentence for stashing millions of dollars abroad from the couple's lucrative hair transplant business. Greek workers are striking against reforms the government is scrambling to finalize with lenders that will affect pensions and labor rights. Members of left-wing organizations as well as public and private sector workers joined the rally in which they marched to the Greek parliament building. Over 3,000 people have been left homeless after the 6.5 magnitude that rocked Indonesia on Wednesday. The death toll is currently at 102. More than 700 people have been injured. Relatives and airline officials prayed for the victim of the deadliest plane crash in four years at a morgue in Islamabad, where bodies recovered from the crash site were being identified. Colleagues of the crew members, some present at the crash site, mourned the loss of their friends. While giraffe numbers have plummeted by 40% in the last three decades, the species is now vulnerable to extinction. This is according to a top conservation body. The population of the world's tallest land mammal dropped to below 100,000 in 2015 mainly due to habitat loss and illegal hunting. Sick Kenyans were turned away from hospitals and patients were left stranded in their wards as a crippling strike by doctors and nurses demanding pay rises entered its fourth day. Several patients have died as a result of lack of care in public hospitals, many of which are completely unstaffed. The Palestinian Ministry of Detainees and Ex-Detainees and the al ahrar Movement in the Gaza Strip organized a set-in protest Wednesday in solidarity with Palestinian hunger-striking prisoners in Israeli jails. The rally was held at the ministry headquarters in western Gaza City. The protesters called for the immediate release of Anas Shadid and Ahmed Abu Farah, who have been on a hunger strike for 74 consecutive days. This is the most dangerous hunger strike in the history of the Palestinian prisoners' movement because the hunger striking prisoners refuse even vitamins even though it's legal according to the Israeli prison's authority. They have refused food in order to achieve victory. Shadid and Abu Farah are most probably in a coma now, and any one of them could be pronounced dead at any moment. Shadid, 29, and Abu Farah, 24, were imprisoned in August. Both have refused food since September 25th to protest their administrative detention without a charge or trail. The hunger strikers have continued to refuse food, although their health is substantially deteriorating.
According to the Palestinian Prisoners Club, over 700 Palestinians are imprisoned by Israel under indefinitely renewable administrative detention orders without a charge or trial. Harazin, Trisu TV, Gaza. Brazilians link arms around Rio de Janeiro's iconic Maracana Stadium in tribute to the victims of the plane crash that killed most of the members of the Chapasoense Soccer Club. Only six people survived the November 28th plane crash that killed 75 people. The tribute was organized by Jonathan Costa and went viral on social media. More on these and other stories on our website, telesortv.net slash English.